I'm seeing a lot of videos in which the presenter mistakes compound paths and compound shapes in Adobe Illustrator, but the difference can be quite important. So hello to the Vector Garden YouTube channel. In this small series, we're going to take a look at how to create compound paths and compound shapes. What's the difference, why it matters, what you can use them for, and how to solve some issues that might appear when you use them. Let's first take a look at compound paths because they are the older construction. I'm going to draw a rectangle and another rectangle on top. Let's make this yellow. And what I want to do is punch a hole. So this should be a hole in the red one. So in order to do that, can select those two, go to Window Pathfinder, and then click on Subtract minus Front. And you see the yellow is gone and we have now got a hole. So this is really see-through. I'm going to view and then let's turn on the transparency grid and you see there's nothing there. So let's turn that off again. Now I'm going to undo that. There are other methods to do the same. So I could take the eraser tool and then just erase something and Let's take a look at this in the Layers panel, and you see we've got a compound path again. So, compound path. Let's undo this. There are more methods. Now, I'm going to type some text. I'm going to type the letter G, and you see it has a counter. So, let's go to Type and Create Outlines. And if you look into the Layers panel, then we have a group here, but if you expand that, we've got a compound path yet again, because we need a hole again. We can also just move this on top, select those two, and then instead of clicking here, let's do that again, and you see, compound path. Let's undo that. This is a little awkward because there is no shortcut. If you go into here, Object, Compound Path, Make, you see we've got a shortcut and we've got a compound path. The same thing. So no matter whether you click here or use the shortcut, you get the same thing. We also get compound paths when drawing. So I'm going to use the blob brush. The blob brush makes shapes. So if I draw something and go into view outline, you see I've got a shape. Let's go back to the preview. And now I'm going to draw something like this. And you see we've got a path, still a path. And now I'm going to draw on and still it's a path. But once I close this here, you see we've got a compound path because this in here can only be made with a hole. So, and for that, we need a compound path. Now we have seen that in order to punch something, we can use the Pathfinder. And the Pathfinder created a compound path. Let's take a look at something different. I'm going to type the letter I, like this. So this is text, and I'm going to create outlines. And again, we've got a group. And inside we've got the compound path. Now with text and expanding text, this also happens for technical reasons. So if you do the same with the letter K, which is just one path, and then go to create outlines, again, you get a group and inside you've got a compound path. So with outlining text, you always get compound paths. But let's take a look at this situation here. We've got several elements and then let's take a look at what do we get when we use the pathfinder like we did here do we get compound paths as well so let's make some rectangles and let's select them all and not click on this but let's click on this here 
And you see, we get a group. Now, let's look inside, but there are just the paths. So the Pathfinder chose the simplest kind of object that it can create, which was a group in this case. It didn't create a compound path. It only makes compound path when it absolutely must. So when you want a hole, then it must be a compound path. But here, it doesn't need to be. That is the first thing where it gets important because for some things you want to do, you absolutely need a compound path. We're going to take a look at that in the next video. So let's take a look at compound shapes. We've seen how to get compound paths. How do we get compound shapes? Let's go into the menu of the Pathfinder panel and there you see it. It's not active because I don't have an object yet. Let's take some more objects like this. I'm going to select these two and then we can make a compound shape. And you see, compound shape, two objects inside. Let's undo that. I'm going to select only one of them. Again, I can make a compound shape and there's only one of them inside. This is sometimes a nice thing to have when exporting to Photoshop, but we're going to take a look at that later on. So what else can you do? Compound shapes are only available in the Pathfinder panel. So what else you can do is select these two. And then you see there's this rather long tooltip. These are short, these are long. So when you press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click on this, you get again a compound shape. Let's undo that again. So let's make something different. I'm going to enlarge this and put this here. So that one is on top. That's the bottom. Select these two, hold down the Alt key and press that. And we've got a compound shape. If you do not press the Alt key, you get a compound path and there you get a compound shape. The result is basically the same, but it can vary if we also look at the special options we have. In a later video, I'm going to here and just release it. And let's take this, move it here, and then again, select these two, hold down the Alt key and you see, We've got a compound shape again. It's just another method applied to it. This was how to create compound paths and compound shapes. In the next videos, we're going to look at what they are good for.